Hello, and thank you for joining us for our webinar this evening. My name is Jeff Chittister, and I'm the Executive Director of External Affairs here at the Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy. Tonight, we have a special group of students with us to provide some perspective into the dual degree programs offered by the Batten School. I'm going to assume that most of you are already familiar with what we're doing at Batten. Um, and so uh, if you're not, I encourage you to take a, a deeper look uh, either at the information that's available publicly or more importantly, to, con to connect with one of us on the admissions team. Um, but just, just as a quick overview, um, the Batten School uh, was created in 2007 and it represents a new model of public policy education. It's one that infuses leadership with policy and policy with leadership, one that seeks to educate and train and cultivate the next generation of policy leaders. Of the 250 plus schools of public policy and administration here in the US, Batten is the only one that is explicitly committed to teaching both public policy and leadership. One of the neat things about the way the Batten School operates is that we have five dual degree options in conjunction with five other schools at UVA. Um, so we offer an MPP JD, which is a combined four year degree with the School of Law. We have a M an MPP MBA with the Darden School of Business, which is three years combined. We have an MPP MPH, which is a Master of Public Health, and that's uh, in partnership with the medical school. That's also three years combined. We have a MPP MUEP, which is a Master of Urban and Environmental Planning in partnership with the School of Arch Architecture. That is also a three-year combined degree. And then finally, we have an MPP uh, PhD in Education Policy with the School of Education and Human Development. There is not a defined time frame for that. It is as long as it takes for you to get a PhD, which as you probably know, can vary widely from person to person. Um, I am thrilled uh, to have four friends and four representatives from these dual degree programs with us this evening. Uh, I'm a big believer that when you're considering a school, it's so important to engage with multiple people that can provide you with a wide variety of lenses into a school and into a program. I was not in a dual degree program at UVA, uh, but these students are, and their perspectives are so valuable. So as I introduce them, please begin to think about questions you might wanna ask them once we open it up to Q&A. So let me introduce the group tonight. Kim Curtis is in her fourth and final year in the MPP JD program. She graduated from Boston College in 2013 with a double major in economics and theology. Following graduation, she served for a year with the Jesuit Volunteer Corps at Haven for Hope in San Antonio, Texas. And her resume includes internships with the White House, the Central Virginia Legal Aid Society, and Klein Horning LLP, and jobs with Eris Insight and Indwelling. She's also from the Philadelphia area, which I consider to be her best attribute. Uh, Henry Frost is in his third and final year in the MPP MBA program. He earned his BA from Dartmouth College in 2015 as a double major in government and philosophy. He served as an analyst for Avacent and an investment associate for Cambridge Associates prior to joining the University of Virginia in 2018. And his internships include the Center for Strategic and International Studies and Morgan Stanley. Hannah Adams is in the MPP MPH program, which she began in 2018. She graduated from James Madison University in 2017 with a BS in public health education. For three years, she served as a development associate at the Blue Ridge Casa for Children, a nonprofit that advocates for abused and neglected children. She's also worked for the Center for Health Policy her entire time thus far at UVA. And Michael Salguero is in his final year in the MPP MUEP program at the Architecture School. He graduated from Georgetown University in 2015 with a double major in economics and philosophy. Following graduation, Michael worked as a consultant for Deloitte for three years, focusing on the energy, pharmaceutical, and healthcare sectors. He's also currently an affordable housing research fellow at the Local Initiatives Support Corporation. Welcome to you all. So let me, uh, I want to as quickly as possible, open it up to Q&A. Um, and so I'm not going to do the thing where I ask a general question and then say, all right, Kim, then Hannah, then Henry. I, I'd like to just sort of uh, throw a, one question at each of you to get the ball rolling. And let me let me start off with Kim. Um, so Kim, unlike the other programs that we have represented tonight, the with the, the JD MPP, you have this two-year gap 
between your times as a Batten student. So you do year one at Batten and then you did your 1L and your 2L and now in your final year, you're gonna have a semester at each place. Have you been able to continue your relationships with members of the Batten community while you've been away at the law school? Um, yes, and I actually structured mine a little bit different. I actually did take one class at Batten last fall um, during my 2L year just to kind of keep my toes uh, in the water over there. So that's been really helpful. I took, so I have had of my four years, one year that I had no Batten classes. Um, but that was the year that all the people that I start, started Batten with were finishing their time at Batten. So I was definitely still very connected to them. So um, I feel like, I, I don't know I, if maybe other people can say they have different experiences, but I feel like I have, I feel like Batten has really made an effort to keep me connected. I'm still on all the listservs and stuff, even when I'm sort of like in residence at the law school. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've still been involved in things and done like the bat and build service activities and different things like that, even when I wasn't technically in the bat and school when I was in the law school. So, right. So, and I should say like, while I'm not going to specifically ask everybody to weigh in, certainly do jump in, um, if you have something to add. Um, so definitely Michael and Henry and, ha and uh, Hannah. Feel free at any point. Um, but just so a quick follow up on that, Kim, because uh, um, I mean, when you, you know, once you're over at law, though, if you do come over to Batten for a Batten hour or to see a professor or, a, you know, um, is I mean, you, you, you're, you're, you're sort of back home, right? There's not like, a, oh, my gosh, I feel like I've been away from this place forever. I, I tend to hear that, but I'm not sure if that's just people telling me nice things. Is it, is it still welcoming when you've gone away and then come home for a little bit? Yes, definitely. I think the like the only real weird thing is that now the majority of my classmates I don't know as well mm -hmm. um, just because I don't have as many classes with them and now everyone that I'm in class with now is in their second year so they're all doing electives and all taking different things and you know so I don't see them as much but um, the faculty and staff have been the same and they're all wonderful people who and I think that's really one of the great things that I love about Batten is like sort of how small it is. Um, and how much the faculty and staff invest in getting to know us. Um, and so coming back, um, I mean, some of them are like, are you still here? Like <laughs> how long has it been? Um, but yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm still, um, yeah, I, I do kind of feel like Batten is sort of my home base at UVA. Um, and maybe that's because I started there or maybe that's just because it's, um, just such a happy, nice, wonderful place. But yeah, I definitely feel like it's coming home whenever I'm in Garrett Hall. Well, and it's interesting too, because, you know, um, I think law, the law school and the Batten school, um, I think both are, you know, just fantastic in their own ways. But I, I you know, they're, they're, they're different in a lot of ways too. And, and um, let me turn to Henry. I, I know that, you know, it's kind of similar with uh, Darden as well, the School of Business, where you know, every school at UVA, so for those of you who don't know, UVA is comprised of 12 schools, and each school has its own culture and its own identity. Um, Henry, talk about some of the, both the challenges and the benefits of, like, building community with two schools at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I think one of the really special things about being a dual degree student is that you get extra cohorts, um, and so I really feel like I have taken classes and lived with and spent time with um, two classes of Darden students and two classes of Batten students. And so, you know, I'm coming out of UVA after three years with four cohorts that really feel like they're, you know, they're my people, they're my friends, they're my network. Um, and that I think is just an enormous perk. You know, if you just do one degree, you, you know, you go through two years and you come out with one cohort. And if you add an extra year, you get four cohorts. Um, and so I think that's like, that's a huge perk, both personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and then Jeff, so your question about kind of the, the, the cultures, I think it's another thing that's really wonderful about a dual degree because the schools really do have different cultures. And it's been, you know, I spend most of my time now uh, at the Darden School and it's a great school. Uh, it's an awesome place to be. I love it. It's a very business oriented place. You know, most people are coming in, they're going into the private sector, um, they're sort of pursuing careers in management, operations, finance, uh, and it's really refreshing and fulfilling to be able to uh, step out of that world and come back to Batten 
uh, into a world where people are pursuing careers in service and in sort of the public good. Um, and that's just something that, you know, I feel like it's good for the soul um, to be able to come back and, you know, I take a class on mergers and acquisitions. And then, you know, the next day I'm working on my uh, class where I'm focusing on trying to abolish the death penalty in Virginia. And I think that being able to sort of pivot back and forth gives this like really remarkable combination of like really, you know, practical hard skills, but then being able to do things that are really fulfilling and that I really care about. Um, and I think that that's just like, that's an experience that I, I wouldn't trade for the world. Yeah. And I, I, I think when you're talking about sort of what happens with, you know, an MPP and an MBA um, or an MPP and a JD, I mean, there seems, I, I'm sure that whatever overlap there is between the two worlds, you and, and Kim have found and dual degree students will typically sort of have as much overlap as possible, but they, but they are, you know, kind of uh, fairly distinct spaces by and large. And I think, um, you know, Hannah, when I think of the MPH and the MPP, it seems like there's a lot more sort of topical overlap. And, and I'm just curious, you know, when you're thinking about just public health policy, what sort of topical synergies have you found um, between the work that you're doing at Batten and the work that you're doing at the med school? Yeah, so um, public health is very much geared towards policy in the first place. Um, a lot of what we are learning about is how to do either community level or higher interventions um, and things like that. And so I think there's a lot of um, very specific skills that I've learned through the med school. Um, and some things are the same thing, but have different terms, which is kind of fun. Um, but it's really opened up the possibilities for me to be able to see how I can use both of my degrees. Um, someone recently asked me, because I've, I've had this question before, someone recently asked me if I thought it was worth it to do both, um, or why not just get your MPP and not even do your MPH um, and just go work in health policy. And I think that you miss a critical piece of healthcare and administration um, and some of the traditional aspects of medicine that you are definitely not exposed to at Batten. Um, so there's a lot of similarities. A lot of the quantitative side is pretty repetitive, but it's nice because now I feel like I know it really well after having done it twice. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also some differences and I think that there's value in, in looking at both. Yeah, and I think you've hit on one of those uh, one of those questions that everybody considering a dual degree has to sort of grapple with, which is, you know, do I do I need both degrees? Should ought, should should I do both degrees, which requires you know in in three of the four cases an additional year, but in in the JD case uh, two more years, um, especially with you know if you just do the MPP at Batten you can use your elective hours to take courses at other schools. And I think that in some cases, that's great. In some cases, it's just not enough. And I think the stuff that you're talking about, Anna, um, you know, makes it seem like you've, you know, you've made the right decision for yourself, but that this is, this is one of those, you know, very personal calls that people have to make. Do I, do I sort of tailor the electives towards this field? Um, or do I actually get the two separate degrees? And as Henry mentioned, um, benefit from having two networks to leverage throughout your career. Um, I'm going to open it up in just a second. So I want to get to Michael, but but start, um, you know, maybe getting some questions ready. But um, Michael, I, I, I have more of a, I don't know if this is a process question for you. So apologies, but um, you're uh, of the group tonight, you're the only one that started his graduate career at a different school at UVA and then applied to Batten while you were at that school. So, so let me step back for a minute. Um, when you apply to dual degree programs, you apply to both schools separately um, and you have to be admitted to both schools separately. Um, that's, you know, so that's why it's a dual degree and not a joint degree. Um, I'd say the vast majority of students apply to both at the same time uh, because they sort of wanna know that they're into both. Um, but we certainly get plenty of people too. Um, it's not that uncommon where a student will, you know, start at Batten and then realize, oh yeah, I didn't re I didn't know about this dual degree, or I'm really interested in law, or vice versa. And so, Michael, you started um, at the A school, so why don't you talk about, you know, that that thought process of I'd like to now jump into a dual degree and then jumping into Batten already as an existing graduate student at UVA. Yeah. 
Yeah, Jeff, um, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. We can hear you. Yeah, you're good. Excellent. Great. Um, that's a great question. So um, I, you know, ended up coming to UVA. Um, I applied to a bunch of different planning schools um, and the urban planning field um, can take a couple of different forms depending on where you go. Um, it can be more design oriented like it is here at UVA or it can be more um, policy oriented. Um, and uh, ended up due to a bunch of personal and other things ended up at UVA, which you know has been fantastic. Um, ended up at the at the a school a school doing planning. Uh, the a school degree is very design oriented. There's a lot of um, working in Adobe and Photoshop and those sorts of things, um, which is an integral skill um, if you're going to move into the the, the planning profession. Um, but I was also super fascinated um, in um, land use policy um, and felt like I needed uh, an MPP to really wrestle with those concepts in a more meaningful way. Uh, and so the process was I showed up, I, I had an, sort of an idea that that might be the case. And so as soon as I arrived, started having conversations, um, ended up speaking to you, Jeff, pretty early on um, to get my bearings. Um, and everybody was extremely inviting I'm extremely open to having conversations about what the dual degree process would look like. Amanda Crombie as well. Anybody that ends up coming here, we'll, we'll get to know Amanda and she's outstanding and, and really helpful. Um, applied to the program, was accepted. Uh, and it was really nice to feel at home and then come into the Batten program and find a second home. Uh, I know a bunch of the, the previous speakers have, have commented on how uh, Batten does feel like home and I'll echo that. Um, and note that, um, you know, vi visited, ha had the lay of the land and could really, as soon as I arrived uh, at Batten, dig into um, the coursework and also bring others into Charlottesville um, that had arrived and say, hey, these are the really cool coffee shops or these are the really cool places um, to, to, to go out and explore. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, you know, from a process standpoint, it was really straightforward and legible. Um, and from an experiential standpoint, it was um, very welcoming. Um, and from an academic standpoint, I feel like I'm getting exactly what I wanted out of um, both programs and feeling um, quite satisfied in, in, in the route I've chosen. So if you have any other follow-up questions, happy to answer those. I think of a few things. Um, one, I really wanted a, an integrated program. There's a lot of MBA, MVP programs that are across schools. Um, you get an MBA at one school, an MVP at the other, and they combine them. I didn't want that. I didn't want to live out of a suitcase for three years. It's really nice to be able to like build a community in one place. So that was one thing. Um, a huge part of the draw is Charlottesville. I don't know where y'all are coming from, but like this is an incredible place to live. Um, like regardless of what you're here to do, like it's just like most students that you talk to are like, this is my favorite place I've ever lived. There's so much to do. It's beautiful. It's like, it's fun. Like, it's just, it's a fantastic sort of quality of life. Um, so that's a big piece of it. And then I think the other one is that it's, it's tough to find um, schools, like a, a, a dual degree program where both schools are leaders, both academically and in practice. Um, so like one thing I really like about Darden, this is very specific to MBA programs, but is, is the case method. Um, there's not a lot of business schools that use the case method. It's an excellent instructional tool. I feel like I've learned a lot more academically in my MBA than most other business programs um, can advertise. And I think that Batten also has a really unique focus on teaching excellence, like excellence of teaching um, that a lot of MPP schools don't have. Um, and so I think that that sort of academic quality is, is really special. Um, and then also just, you know, professionally speaking, um, I'm, I'm going to Richmond after school, uh, and it's really unique to be able to be at a program where I can be at like a, a leading private sector firm in Richmond uh, after school and already be sort of getting, you know, meeting people and interacting with people that are active in the policy world in, uh, you know, Richmond local and Virginia state politics. Um, so I think that being able to have that like combination of like academic excellence and then also that like professional network in each of these different worlds is something that a lot of dual degree programs um, can't, can't advertise. 
In terms of why not just the MPP, I think it really depends what you're looking for. Um, I think like the leadership curriculum at Batten is excellent. Um, I would like, if I was talking about like, where did I learn the most about leadership between Batten and Darden, it's Batten hands down. Um, but I think that what I learned at, at Darden that I didn't get at Batten is some of the sort of hard business skills, you know, figure finance, accounting. Um, I'm, you know, I interned at Morgan Stanley in investment banking this past summer. Um, that's probably not an internship that, that comes just with Batten, right? That's like, that's a very much a um, sort of an MBA focused internship. Uh, and so I think there was just sort of, it really depends on what you want to do. I think as someone that's like really interested in being in the private sector in the short term and in the public sector in the long term, the combination of the two degrees, I don't think that I could have done either one independently and gotten nearly the same experience. In terms of the internships, uh, it's pretty siloed. So like my first year, I was very much just like a normal Batten first year, had the same experience as the rest of my classmates. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I was in a little bit of a weird case because I, I found my internship through like a conference that I went to that was outside of the Batten recruiting network, um, but very much, you know, would have leveraged sort of the, like the Batten recruiting uh, network to sort of think about my first year. And then in my second year, like I pivoted over to Darden. I was a normal Darden first year student and I got my internship through the like Darden recruiting machine. Um, but then the really nice thing is that if you're interested in like a non-traditional or like sort of more like dual focused internship, like you have both of these recruiting arms at your disposal. Uh, and so it's really nice to be able to, you know, even when I'm at Darden, be able to be in touch with folks at Batten and say, you know, hey, I'm interested in this thing, you know, can I get in touch with uh, folks that focus on this policy area or this geographic area? Um, and so I think that that's just, you know, again, it's like a, it's a force multiplier. Um, you have sort of twice the recruiting um, strength behind you that, that you might with just just the one degree. Um, and then in terms of the other students, yes, absolutely. Um, the, the dual MBA and DP students, uh, are some of my closest friends that I've made it at UVA. Um, when I started, it was actually a, it's, it's a growing program. So when I started, it was just me and one other student uh, across the three years. There was no one in the two years above us. Um, and that student is, you know, maybe my closest friend uh, that I've met that, at UVA. And I believe, Jeff, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe there are six of us now across the three years. Um, one of my classmates from my first year at Batten ended up applying to Darden and joining. So there's three of us in my class and, and we're all very close friends. Um, and then I've gotten to meet the folks in the, in the years afterwards. And it's definitely sort of a, you know, it's a unique experience. And so you form a unique bond and it's, it's a really great community. And there are six, I would say that that's probably, you know, on average, you know, we're probably going to have one to three per year, um, I think across all the different programs, you know, um, we usually have, you know, one or two or, you know, potentially three in each one. So, you know, and, and we're only, a, you know, we, we keep our, um, our MPP classes capped at 90. And so, you know, combined, it's probably about uh, 10, 15% of the total class on, an, on a normal year. I probably would say that my experience, my first, like Henry said, my first year is in Baton and my, so my first internship was just policy focused. My second summer was pretty much just law focused, um, although I did spend time doing legal aid, which I think if you're doing legal aid, you kind of have to think big picture about the world because um, there's a lot of things that are impacting, um, you know, and I was working on eviction. So there's a lot of outside policy things that are going on in that world. Um, but it was really mostly using my legal background. Um, and so I've kind of been on this mission of trying to forge the two paths together. I think law school can tend to be very sort of one track in terms of people wanting to go to law school because they want to get a job at a big law firm. And there's, you know, a very well laid out plan and path on how to do that. Um, and you can ask my law school career counselor, I've been bucking that this whole time. <laughs> um, because to me, it was really important to be able to bring those two worlds together. And so what I'm doing, what I did this past summer, what I'm going to be doing post-graduation is working. Um, it's, it is a law firm, so it's, you know, primarily legal, but we're working on affordable housing. So all those policy considerations come into play as well. And, um, 
I, I think, I guess I would say you, you kind of just have to make it your own mission to build those bridges and explain to people and like highlight through your experiences and your resumes and your cover letters and your networking, like why those two things go together. Um, I think in my experience, when I've talked to people um, that are, you know, professionals in the world, they generally do kind of ask like, well, why do that? Why do this degree when you could just do this one, when you could just do one or um, vice versa. And I think usually you kind of just make the case on your own. And, and so you kind of just like have to, I don't know, I just bring it with me everywhere I go. Like I'm, if I, even when I'm doing a legal internship or I'm doing a policy thing, like I just bring it all with me. And I'm like, you know, this, you're getting the full package here, folks. You're getting more than you might've bargained for. And I think that's kind of part of the value. And I think it's also just, it's very, and I think you could, I think you could easily not do that, but like, clearly you want to, <laughs> you know, you want to have both degrees. You want to bring both of those things to the table. So I think it's just, it's kind of about like, I don't know, forging your own path a little bit. Cool. Thank you so much. Sure. Great. Thank you. So um, if anyone wants to just jump in, uh, you don't have to do the hand raising thing if you don't want to. So feel free to unmute uh, and jump right in. Um, but as we're as we're shaming people to unmute and say something, um, I, I did want to ask, um, you know, both uh, Michael and Hannah, um, you know, because I think that one of the things when you're in the search, um, you know, it's hard to know you just kind of what questions to even ask, let alone, you know, what answers you have already. And it's, it's sometimes you just don't even know the questions. And, um, you know, now that you're, in your final year, if you had to go back to to the position of um, you know our guests here on on the webinar, and just think about what do I wish I would have asked back then? What do I wish I would have pressed for? What do I wish I would have known? Like, is there anything that comes to mind that that you can help guide them in their own search? Like, you know, as a question they might want to ask to our program or to, or to other programs they're considering. Um, I'll go if that's okay, Michael. Yeah. Um, I, I, I came to UVA thinking I was just going to get a master's of public health, um, had never heard of Batten until Amanda Crombie, who is remarkable. And I hope you get to meet her, um, reached out and said, Hey, you should apply for this. You seem like you'd be a good fit. Um, and so I think something that I wish I had asked in the beginning, um, besides a lot of the logistical things, I'm a very type A person. So having my logistical questions answered was really important to me. So definitely ask those logistical questions. Everyone is here to help you, um, especially in something that's so niche, you wanna make sure that this is actually the right fit for you. And so I think that's where I'm going with this comment. Um, I think something that I wish I had asked Batten um, was, why do you think this is the right fit for me? Um, and maybe a different way to phrase that if they don't reach out to you is, um, why would it be a good fit for me to get two degrees? So if you come into this just wanting an MBA, come to Batten and say, why do you, how do you think this policy degree would help me get to where I wanna go? Um, and if you don't know where you wanna go, that's also fine. I didn't when I got here um, and I quickly found out. So. Thankfully, my experience worked out for the best, and this was the absolute best possible solution for me. Um, but that's something I definitely wish I would have asked in the beginning. Yeah, I can go ahead and add to that. Um, and I think I'll slightly invert the way that Hannah answered it um, and say, I'll, I'll start with a bit of a cliche, uh, which is that um, the, the president of the university, he was recently appointed, I guess, two years ago, uh, Jim Ryan, he he sort of had a hit. One of his taglines was "Ours to shape." The university is ours to shape. Um, and so this is less a question about questions to ask of the university versus like questions to ask of yourself. I think that um, UVA and Batten in particular is a place that is, I think, relatively young compared to 
other institutions that do public policy. And uh, we have we have a new dean, Dean Solomon, who joined last year, um, who's fantastic. Uh, and uh, sorry, I hope my internet's okay. Um, and uh, I'll just I'll just note that the most rewarding moments of my time um, in Baton, as well as at, at UVA more broadly with the dual degree program, are the moments where I'm uh, actively uh, looking for ways to shape the way the university is going to operate in the world, um, actively try to shape the way that, um, you know, we can question the way we're doing um, our leader, our leadership curriculum or our economics curriculum, uh, or on the, on the planning side, um, the, 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 you know, the, the impacts that urban planning has had, um, on different parts of our society and ways that, uh, we can, we can rethink paradigms. We can rethink, um, the role of a state institution. Um, so I think, you know, if you're looking for sort of, a like, um, you know, a, a, a diploma mill, um, you know, you, you're going to get your diploma, you know, if you work hard, you'll get your diplomas. Um, but I think the true value in, in coming to a place like that and, and like UVA is that um, there's a lot of opportunity to, to sort of, quote unquote, shape the future um, and, and chart your path and um, do things that are um, maybe not you know, quite aligned to the status quo. I just want to, I just want to add on to what Michael said. Like, I, I, I don't think it should be underestimated that point that he made about sort of that, that ability to shape. Um, because I think that's one of Batten's greatest strengths is the fact that like it is a flexible school that will allow you to make of your experience what you want. Um, and I think that especially, you know, some of the schools at UVA are like old and established and that's great. You know, the law school, business school, like, you know, the hospital has been here forever. Like, that's, that's awesome, but I think that the ability to combine those two things, to have, have like the resources and like institutional knowledge that comes to a place like UVA, that like you know has your back, UVA has been around forever, and be able to combine that with the like nimbleness and flexibility of a younger program is just, again, it's like another one of these things that makes, makes the dual degree here a, a really extraordinary opportunity. So like I, I think that everything Michael said, I couldn't agree more with, and I think that it's like a really easy point to overlook and one that definitely should not be. Um, the med school op offers like unfettered access. Like one of my professors from last year, I had him both semesters. He was the old, like the retired CEO. He was the CEO of UVA Health for 14 years. And he taught my hospital admin and my hospital financial management class. And so I think having that health system gives you the opportunity to actually see healthcare policy in action. Um, and also if you have any sort of inkling that you might be interested in a health career or even hospital admin, um, I've toyed with that for a while too. Um, UVA is, I, I think being under the medical school is a great, a great option. Um, the thing I will say about Batten, and I love Batten so much, but Batten honestly does not have great health policy classes. Um, I think last I checked, we might have two. And um, so I think that had I realized that I wanted an MPP, that's why I'm so grateful I have both. Because I think if I had just done an MPP, if I had known at the time that's what I wanted, um, I wouldn't have that access to the healthcare system that I do now. Um, and some of the more technical health related things that sort of help shape my health policy brain. Um, so, so yeah, I did look at other schools. Um, I did like some of the other ones that were just in their own little bracket. Um, and at UVA where the public health group is a strong but mighty bunch, we, we have, I've never met a medical student. Um, we're, we're very separated from them not in any sort of bad way, just we're a strong little cohort. Um, so I think there's still value in that you can still have like a strong public health cohort with access to a massive, very well run um, healthcare system. Round one is January 15th for the MPP. We do have cases where people will ask for Batten to um, make an early decision. 
Um, and, you know, we don't sort of guarantee that we do that, but there are certain cases and early um, decisions for uh, places like Darden are certainly one of them. And so if you were, for instance, to need a decision from Batten um, long before you would expect to get it from us, um, just request it and we're gonna work with you um, to be as accommodating as possible. Student side, um, I just remember being being blown away by both Batten and Darden during that process because I ran into the exact same thing, Luke. I, you know, I was, um, you know, I knew I was into Darden, I was really excited about it, but I didn't want to make the decision on Darden without knowing from Batten because I really cared about doing the dual degree. Um, and I reached out to Darden and it was like, hey, you know, can I delay this? And they were like, hey, rather than delay it, you know, let us go talk to Batten and, and see what the status of your application is. Um, and then I remember, you know, having a phone, I think I was on like a train somewhere and I got a call from Jeff. Uh, I think it's the first time we ever spoke on the phone, Jeff. Um, yeah. Just sort of had that conversation and, and worked through that. And I was just like, the, the degree to which both, and I, I imagine this is true for other students, I can't speak obviously outside of Darden and Batten, but the degree to which like the two schools will work with you to like, ease those those sort of logistical barriers and make the dual degree work is really you know it's really really extraordinary and, and very much appreciated and like you know the, any, any given school is not set up to you know first to accommodate dual degree students right it's set up first to accommodate mpp students at batten mba students at darden etc but when you are doing that crossover the schools will make it work one way or another so they're they're absolutely there for that just to put a bow on those, the good response that Henry gave, I, I think that, you know, the, the, the notion of being accommodating, I think just it, it comes from your general approach as a school and like, you know, goes back to what I said at the beginning, our, our purpose is not to bring in students to teach for two years. Um, it is to build a community of impact and we want to be working with you for 30 or 40 or 50 years. And so it, you know, it, it, it it's important to establish a relationship that is based on mutual respect. And part of that is making is understanding that, you know, you are people with, you know, a, a big decision to make and let's not make it unnecessarily difficult. You know, let's work with you. And I'm glad that I have partners at these other schools that feel the same way. They're really great people. And, uh, and, and hopefully you get to see that as well. Um, well, you know, one of the things that I've always said is, um, you know, once you've heard from places uh, and, and what you've heard tonight from us, if it resonates, you know, continue the conversation. Um, one, of the, one of the things about the people in our community that I'm sure you saw it, it, it tonight um, as just the latest example is that not only are the people that go into our school extraordinary, but they're also very generous. And um, I don't want to put an additional burden on them in this crazy time, but like, you can see like they're going to share their emails. They're going to be a source of, um, you know, really honest perspective. And we want to expand that to other parts of our community. And so if you do feel like you want to continue to talk with uh, myself, um, also on this call is the great Courtney Lyson Snyder, our assistant director of admissions, who is uh, exceptional in every way. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's also really helpful to talk to alums in a field that you're interested in, to talk with faculty members, we will open those doors to you because then you can decide, does this place feel right to you? Um, if it does, um, then apply and, and, and you know, we'll see where it goes. Um, but at least you'll know if, if, if it's the right place by you know, keeping those channels open. Um, so again, I wanna uh, really, really deeply thank uh, Kim and Henry and Hannah and Michael um, for their time tonight. Um, and I really, uh, you know, look forward to just talking to uh, hopefully many of you in the days and, and weeks and months to come. Um, so thank you all. Have a great night. Stay in touch um, and let us know what you need.